a, a circle really is the set of points that are the same distance from the center. So if you pick any center point and you want to know all the points that are of distance 5 centimeters, that will form a circle. That will The set of points that fit that description will be a circle. And it'll be all the points 5 centimeters away from that point you're you're calling the center. All right, we're going to construct a circle. And the idea about these two points is that I can actually move them anywhere I like. If you like, if you can see what I'm doing here, just move them around anywhere. Same with this one. And they just basically are confined to points on the circle. That's kind of what they represent. So whenever I try to do a, let, let's say I want to join two points on the circle kind of somewhere like this using a line segment. So maybe I want to join these. Notice I can move that around and if th if the points happen to be on opposite sides of the circle it'll pass through the radius. So the length of that chord now will be called the diameter. Um, now, of course, the length of the chord anywhere else will be smaller than the diameter, but this is the biggest it can be, is, is the diameter of the circle. Anything else will be smaller. It could also have size zero if the two points are right on top of each other, but, you know, we're not really interested in that for the moment. I'm going to give these, um, we're going to give these uh, uh, points some labels as well. Um... Uh, let's call these points P and Q just to make them distinctive from these other points that we just laid out. Um, <clears throat> so I'll call them P and Q. There we go. So we can move points P and Q around and so on and their labels move with it. And um, also uh, we can maybe construct a triangle out of say O, P, and Q. So if we could take O, P, and Q and construct a triangle, something actually happens that is kind of special in that um, you, you might notice that these two sides of the triangle both represent the radius of the circle, so that means that they're both the same length. And if they're the same length, what that means is that any triangle drawn here will be isosceles. And maybe in some narrow circumstances, you might be able to get a equilateral triangle. Now, to get equilateral triangle, all three sides have to be equal to the radius of the circle. Well, what is the radius of the circle? Uh, I've drawn it in such a way that point A is actually the point one zero if we just take the coordinates. Um, so this is the point one zero on the circle. Um, and uh, that means that all of these lengths are one, right? The, the length of um, the, li the line segment OP and OQ are both equal to one. Now, of course, that makes sense because that happens to be the radius of the circle. Well, if we can somehow get this to equal 1, uh, we would have an isosceles triangle. But uh, another indicator is if we can get, say, uh, an angle like this to be 60 degrees. Because if we know that one's 60, then they're all 60 degrees. Meaning the angle where the vertex is the origin, origin point. And that's close to 60, but we can, I think we can make it closer. But notice that because of the nature of the software we can never make it exactly 60 degrees. So that's kind of a little bit of a letdown but that means I can make this I can make the length of this line close to one but never actually one but that's again a, a flaw in the software. Uh, geometrically of course you can make all three lines equal to one uh, and that means that you can have it is possible to have an equilateral triangle there but for the most part, we're concerned with isosceles triangles. Now, isosceles means that only two of the angles will be equal, guaranteed, right? No matter what I do, it doesn't matter. If, even if they're, even if I put the points here 
and if I measure that angle and we can see it's 26.14 degrees well if we measure angle Q <coughs> in the same way sorry just select these two lines you can see here these two angles are identically the same and it doesn't really matter what I do with these lines or sorry what I do with these two points they will always be um, those angles will always be equal angle Q will always equal angle P as long as we're talking about an inscribed triangle inside uh, a circle okay <clears throat> and in this case it's what we call a unit circle and it's a unit circle because the radius is one and the center is at the origin so those those for the unit circles we we will be discussing um, say especially in the trigonometry section if, if we ever refer to a unit circle not only is the radius one but the center is at the origin for that of course we can make a right angle triangle kind of like that if you wanted to but this is a, also a very special triangle this is called a right isosceles triangle it is both a right angle triangle and its isosceles that is because this and this uh, both of those lines are of equal length now another thing we can discuss as well is um, the idea okay so we have a chord but that chord is really isn't a nothing more than a line segment right this is just a line segment going from P to Q or Q to P if you like and that that will have a midpoint and that line like any line or at least any line segment will have a perpendicular bisector so all line segments have a perpendicular bisector and this one is no different so if we construct a um, construct a midpoint first and construct a perpendicular line and something very special happens notice that that perpendicular bisector passes through the origin and it doesn't matter what I do to P and Q this will always be true this is a um, a very basic property geometrically for a circle is that it you know and for any chord uh, those chords will have a midpoint and the perpendicular bisector passing through that midpoint will always pass through the center this is always true and you can see uh, I can do anything I want uh, with these two points and absolutely they will pass through uh, or the perpendicular bisector will always pass through the center of the circle there's another thing too there's a point of intersection between this line passing through the origin right and the circle now here's a here's a question what if what will we get if we found a, a line perpendicular to this line but passing through that one point in the circle right notice that if you imagine a perpendicular line happening there it'll only pass through that one point in the circle and won't touch any other point in the circle so if we did that if we constructed a perpendicular line there uh, let, let's change the color to something a little like red or something okay notice that uh, oh hold on maybe we'll do this notice that that you know if I move these points around to control the cord that that line that red line seems to have that same property where it seems to just pass through that one point in the circle and is perpendicular to this line going from O to whatever point here uh, is on the circle and so you know we call this line we give this line a name this red line is called a tangent line so this line which is tangent um, to the circle we can hide this line and only expose the line OR. So why don't we do that? So we're so we're going like this OR. All right. So 
if we now think about this as a right angle triangle, let's say um, that this is a, um, uh, a right angle triangle, and uh, let's measure the distance of that. And notice that if I move that around, S moves, and um, this is always perpendicular to this. Reason tells you if this is where y equals 0, then this must be where y equals this number, right? So the length of this line is actually the y-coordinate itself because we're measuring directly from the x-axis. So this here is the y-coordinate itself, and this here is the x-coordinate. This is the length from O to S, right? And this is the length from R to S. So we can actually break R down into just the x and y, here, or we call it the abscissa and the ordinate. So we'll, we'll just do that. So this is the x and the y of, of this. This is really, you know, that's that height, and this is this length from... O to S. ORS is a right angle triangle. If we take the length OR, oh, sorry, OS, which is this number, and if we take the length OR, oh, sorry, RS, which is this number, and if we square that, and if we square this and we square this, we should get the radius of the circle, which is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, which is the actual radius. I mean, if we square this and we square this and we add them together, we get the radius squared, but 1 squared is 1. So in this case, we can actually get the radius kind of on the cheap without having to take a square root. So here, we'll do a calculation. And here, I'm just going to do xr squared, um, squared. And then we're going to add it to this other, this other point squared. And notice we do get 1, and we'll get 1 no matter what. We'll, and that's because the radius is constant here. And so I can move that around, and notice this value never changes. You can actually, if you like, you can stop the video when I'm at a particular number like this. Enter these numbers onto your calculator, square that number, add it to the square of that number. The nut, the, the, um, answer should always be 1, right? The answer should always be equal to 1. And that's because the radius is 1. Uh, but, of course, if the circle was of any other radius, you would just get the radius squared, right? So the formula for any circle of radius 1 is just to say that x squared plus y squared equals 1, okay? Formula for radius equals any radius, radius r, right? So if we have that, then we're saying x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But this, this actually is a little more specific, right? So this is like a general formula, but it's actually only one kind of general formula. This is a formula for radius r, uh, circle centered at uh, the origin, right? Both of them are centered at 0, 0. Um, what if you wanted it centered at anywhere else? How about um, how about a formula for a circle and the circle has a center, let's say any center at all, HK we'll call it. In fact that's usually what you see that, that's usually the notation you see in textbooks. And if we have that, then um, you get this. You, you get basically x minus h all squared plus y minus k. Uh, sorry, got to put that in brackets. Um, all squared equals the radius squared. 
So that's as for a circle centered anywhere else on the Cartesian plane of any radius.